four-man mosh pit followed by a tomb. Oh, no. Oh, a huge light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five-man light bomb. They're going to follow up, and they're going to get one, two, three kills. And it's going to be everybody dying. Oh, my God. When does this happen? G'day and welcome to another Nexus Gaming Series cast. This time we have Division, well, once again we're back at Division C, but Division I honestly cast the most, just because I feel like they are underappreciated compared to all the other divisions. I feel like they get, I feel like they're one of the divisions that get the least. I would be interested to see the numbers on that. Uh, anyway, I'm your host for this evening, the Lime Bus, and we have Division C East, Regen Nebula, facing off against the Team Nexus Cats. I know people on both teams, there's lovely people on both teams, but this should be a good matchup from my understanding. I was unfortunately spoiled that it was at least a free map series, so I do know we'll be a little bit back and forth, but... So, there will be one map where I know where it goes, but I don't know the end result, and I don't know how we get there. So, it's all about the journey, isn't it? But looking at this, we see Region Nebula, Band Out, Braxis, Holder, and Dragonshire. Not quite trusting the offline by the looks of it. Meanwhile, Nexus Cats did ban out Tomb of the Spider Queen and Cursed Hollow, which is, leaves Infernal Shrines up, which I'm scared about. <laughs> I'm sick of seeing Infernal Shrines. But at least we're not starting there. We start with... Uh, well, it is... T Towers of Doom. Which... Nice. I, I like Tales of Doom. I mean, it's maybe it's because I'm the offlaner and just AFK my mind, go back and forth, and I'm good to go. But we'll see how it goes for both these teams. So let's just hop into the match and see how this goes, shall we? Right, so on the side of Regent Nebula, we have Murder on Blaze, Stixer on the Junkrat, Tashives on Tychus, Rackham on Anduin, who's getting a bit sword bug, and we have IT Cowboy and Samuro. Interesting. Meanwhile, we have Cawthon on the... I actually can't tell who that is. Zul, Pet Wolverine on Thrall, Arthano on Sylvanas, Lulu on the... Dickhead and Mark Zombie on the, well, Mirrodin. So, just to break it down simply, this is usually a map where you see the offlaner double soak while the rest of the team hard pushes bottom. This, Samuro isn't amazing at double soak, at least till 7, he gets a right, level 10, he gets his blades tool, which makes him much better. Meanwhile, oh, <laughs> There's a pause happening, apparently. Meanwhile, the Zul can, well, double soak immediately. So, this may start in Nexus Cat's favor, but we'll see how where it goes coming into the mid and late game. We see Murder is trying to slow down the rotation of the side of Nexus Cat's. Does get a nice stun. Pet Wolverine getting relatively low very early and actually nearly dies. Getting tossed all over the place. Junkrat doing their best to finish it. Pet Wolverine barely gets that potion. Does have to steal it from Mark Zombie. But does... As I say, as I say does get to live, but gets to live a little bit longer is what I should have said. As that uh, is the Thrall going down. And first blood going over the side of Region Nebula. Who are going to immediately look at stealing camp. Which, honestly, you have a man advantage. May as well. Looking at talents, anything that stands out. We have... New Habits by Blaze, which will be actually a very important one coming into this, as well as uh, Muradin went for stacking quest, which I miss the old Muradin stacking. I enjoyed the stacks off Hammer. The auto attack one just feels so, so awesome. It's a very dead pit Wolverine again. Uh, yeah. So while I made the comment about offlane being so important in this map, you can't just give kills over that easily. And I guess with for all, you're really wanting to rush someone down and kind of all in someone. So it does make it a bit harder for the side of Nexus Cats to really get close because this Tychus is going to be a problem for, well, three of the members of Nexus Cats and it makes it much harder just to all in rush someone. But with the soaking that's happening, we do see Corfin is getting a little bit extra as if I can go over to experience, which is this one. Yeah, we can see Minion Folk 
So is in favor of wait, where am I looking? Is in favor of the now as opposed to the samurai. There is a lot of items being used to trade here. Mark Zombie getting tossed around. We do see murderers finally come out. Does get a nice double stun. We don't we do know that there's no jump, so that is Muradin down first. And the sappers get to walk in. This is a very strong start by Regen Nebula. Pet Wolverine in danger, and actually Pet Wolverine goes down, losing for stacks of Frostwolf. Something. Pack. Frostwolf Pack, apparently it's called. Meanwhile, we're going to get the normal just trade top. Ba -ba. And while well, I was commenting on the off lane, this is because it's the off lane that I play the most. Well, between off lane and healer, anyway. Samurai's about to get his ability to double soak effectively. He's about to get burning blades, and it makes it much. It'll make it much easier for him to catch up, keep up with Corvin, and actually catch up on soak. But we can see they are doing it right. They're leaving clones mid. They're going up, picking what they can top, etc., etc. But yeah, this just feels like a very comfortable map for Regen Nebula so far. Murder got, got rooted last second, meaning they're not going to quite find the stun on the Pet Wolverine, which Pet Wolverine's probably thankful that they're not getting stunned again. It's been a little, it's been a few into them so far. Probably they're not the happiest about that. But no, we get um level sevens from both sides now. This should be helpful at least for the side of Nexus Cats. Murder kind of charged in the middle of nowhere, but didn't quite go do anything bad per se with that. We can see now that Discharge is getting poked a little bit. So let's just close. He's not burning blade. Interesting, Phantom Pain. You know, we can see they're being slowed down. Right. These oils constantly zoning out the side of Nexus Cast is doing a lot, and we can see that Muradin has been stunned, does have to use Jump Out, Pit Wolverine, and Arfano also got relatively low VFX for that initial impact. So I'm just checking something while I think about it. Yeah, and we have attack speed slow, okay. So this is double alter top. And Stixa is trying to slow down the side of Nexus Cats. If it looks like it's they it looks like they wanted to fight over the Sapper camp, but in all honesty, they are just probably going to invade top right, which you can see Corfin is abundantly aware that it is going to happen. Stixa is going to get the... Oh! I was going to say, Stixa actually wasn't going to quite get the jump crit grenade, but that's also a very dead mark zombie, because they use jump, they don't have escape from the stun, and that is Tishives getting the kill. Tishives always close enough to murder to really get most of their minigun straight off onto whoever they choose. It's being stored out for a while. Rack and Tishav's both on it now. And that is two objectives going over to the side of Regen Nebula. It's not the start you want to see if your Nexus gets, but there's honestly, again, there's a, it's a free map series. We don't know which way it's going to go. Which I guess it's again still sad, but I've, I've been spoiled for the last map, but for the second map, whatever the second map result be. But we do have heroics coming through for the side of Regen Nebula as they have one more kills. There's a little bit more experience in their corner. We do see Bunker drop by Murder. We see Riptide, Junkrat, Commandeer, Odin on Tychus, Light Bomb, Anduin, and Bladestorm on the. Samurai, but on the other hand, we do have Poison Nova from the Zul. Oh, we hear Ancestral Wrath being used on Murder. That's a decent chunk of their health just disappearing. We do also have Avatar Muradin. Stay a while and listen on Decket. Earthquake for all, but we always see Muradin getting jumped on. Also, my control Savannah's my control being whipped. We see that is Stay a while and listen being used. It's a nice four man s sleep. However, with the Earthquake waking them all up not too long after. It's a little bit dangerous. Lulu gets out. Very low health. However, Pet Wolverine not going to be afforded the same nicety as that we've going down. However, Murders get relatively close to going down. We do actually see IT Cowboy in the back line, but it's Arfano going down next. We see Murder doing the best to take out Tear Shives. Does jump out. Lulu just zoned out a lot of that fight. Just low from the start and unable to go back in. Meanwhile, we do see that is Commandeer Odin being dropped there, wanting this keep. 
We see Murder getting the stun onto Mark Zombie. They're kind of missing that little bit of kill pressure thanks to the Odin being active. They don't have the percent damage on Tychus in the meantime. That means Mark Zombie does actually get to live a little. And it's mid ultra up. Comedia Odin now down. Stixer is going to get a free objective, essentially, yeah. But it is just a little bit of damage control from Nexus Cats currently. They're not in a necessarily good position by any means. It is something that they're going to be... It's definitely an uphill, uphill battle at this point. Oh, excellent jump by Mark Zombie and good follow-up route by Pet Wolverine, meaning that Murder isn't able to find the stun. However, Thrall's Crash Lightning itself manages to finish off the camp for Regen Nebula, which is unfortunate with those bounces, but hey, that's the luck of a draw when you're rolling a Thrall. Murder doesn't quite find the stun again, does pop that new habits at Pyromania to mean that they are unstopped. Rackham gets a nice light bomb onto one, however, slow making it a little bit difficult. Nice double hit by the Junkrat Riptide. That'll be Lulu going down, unfortunately, for her. We see Mark Zombie having to jump out. Murder and Co. chasing. Pit Wolf ringing relatively low. That is Tower being turned over. Junkrat flipping over top. Hammer coming out onto Stixer. Stixer having to back up, losing a lot of health in just a few moments. Pit Wolf ring goes for a root, but will go down. Still hasn't been able to finish that Frost Wolf pack as they do keep dying. And this is a very clinical performance so far from Regen Nebula this map. Nine kills to zero, 36 to 20. V6 core health to 20. And we see Corfin now is in danger as the IT Cowboy is going to start running them down. Right. Now we're going to get a high hold on this bottom keep, which is important because you do need to hold this as long as possible, essentially. This is basically a cutting out multiple lanes and bottom is basically free after this point. Mid, however, not as free, but still difficult for the side of Nexus Cats to push through. But as you see, they have managed to get into the objective area now, and we're only just coming up. So it wasn't quite a full five. We do see Arpano is taking a lot of damage from IT Cowboy, actually. Murder gets a nice stun onto Mark Zombie. Mark Zombie needs to push Avatar immediately. Thrall, meanwhile, gets hit by... Ooh, I was going to say a stun. Then we see Mark Zombie getting relatively low. IT Cowboy will constantly... Uh, rack him, trying the best to keep your run up as well themselves. Manages to do so, Thrall being ch chased by IT Cowboy and Murder. Meanwhile, we do see Arpano going down mid, Lulu and Corfin chased out top. Meanwhile, IT Cowboy Rackham is getting the object objective to Shives and Murder chased down Wolverine back into the freshly taken fort. And that will be a triple kill for the side of Regen Nebula, again without losing anyone. Oh, if, this, if I didn't know in advance what was kind of happening next with at least the series, how long it's going to be, I'd say, yeah, this is, uh, this would be region Nebula's all to kind of take in the long run. Oh, nice stun by Mark Zombie, meaning they won't get hit by Murder Stun. Murder actually taking a lot of damage from the fort, probably a bit more than they were bargaining for. And that'll be this wave being blown up. You all can see bottom is... Slowly just losing that fight, but we're going to have a triple sapper cap, a sapper cap going to be pushing through soon, which not ideal if you're Nexus Cats, as Region Nebula is we'll probably are going to try push this in, and we can see murder and at least two other team members. Mur oh, she's really saying, murder to Shives and Rackham are here, ready to kind of push up into the side of Nexus Cats. We can hear Microtrol coming out. Now yeah, a nice double stun from Murder and Mark Zombie having to use Jump to get out. Bunker used Root coming out on Rackham. And these zappers are still up and we can see Pet Wolverine is getting what poke they can. Nice stun by Murder onto Mark Zombie. Mark Zombie starts getting melted again. The core loop that is Nexus, uh, that is Region Nebula. And actually it's Lulu going down. Riptide going, trying to find Mark Zombie. However, it took a little bit too long in that death zone and will go down. Nice stun by Mark Zombie. However, that is too much damage going out of him is a grenade and actually another grenade from Junkrat is the one getting the kill. Murder gets really too low, gets pulled by Rack and aren't they the heal on emergency heal on pull? No they're not but still did it anyway. And we see Murder standing in the back line just self healing. One one sapper shot came through 
you can see five shots coming through from that top one and bottom one will essentially seal the deal Corfin trying their best to race down there not getting their time and that is the first map of series going over to the side of Regen Nebula and an actually very strong first showing GG call by both sides but right let's have a look at the game summary screen yeah, it takes a while for this chat on the screen to go away. Anyway, let's have a look. To shine to 10 kills. Yeah, even with, like, hero damage alone, there's a massive difference. 20k between the top ones, and even Stixer uh, with 38k was still ahead of Arpano with their 33. In terms of si Siege, we do see Corfin did have the advantage there by a good 20k in the end, but very close in terms of soak itself, the experience gained. Healing, Anduin did a lot. <laughs> Poor Lulu was just a little bit, uh, people died a little bit too fast for Lulu to heal them up as much as they would have liked, which it does go that way sometimes, but is unfortunate. All right, let's have a look at talents. Anything that stands out here? Not in particular? I do think it's interesting that Perfect Storm's picked up. I don't know how good it is anymore but I don't play tank as much as I used to and I don't take play mirrored in anywhere near as much as I used to so it's honestly a meh it's a take it or leave it for me I believe but anyway that was that first map let's see where we're going for the second one and as I say every series like while well, yes I do know where the second map's going to go now um I don't know who first picked I don't know who map picked all I know is the team has won at the end of it, but without kind of, I can't, I can't really look at it without spoiling myself for series, that's the unfortunate thing, just because it will show who first picks, who map picks, but unfortunately it will show the results as I look at it, so not ideal to say the least, but we do have Battlefield of Eternity now coming up, which I'm a personal fan of, it's, I guess I can say I'm a personal fan of a lot of maps currently, but this one I do like. It is kind of, when I'm healing at least, it's kind of, I can turn my brain off and just go ham. Anyway, the game has loaded, so let's get into it. As we can see here, we have Corfin on the Leoric for Nexus Cats. We also have Arfano on Vala, Lulu on Anduin, Pet Wolverine on Chromie, and Mark Zombie is on Joanna. And on the other side, we have... IT Cowboy on Blaze. We like we can get off lane Blaze this time. Murder on Varian. Tashives on the Grey Main. Sticks are on Lee Ming and Rackham is on Stukov. And while I say that it is likely a off lane Blaze and Taunt Varian, Varian may just start top just because he do isn't exactly strong up until 4. It's probably started better this way around than the other. However, we could still see Smash. I don't know what Murder's uh, Varian pool looks like, and I don't know how often IT Cowboy plays tank. I know Murder plays is the, usually the tank for Regen Nebula, but I don't know if you're just doing something different. Right, but IT Cowboy does get a stun out. Unstopped by Mark Zombie, so good start for them. Which, considering how the last one went, a character with an on-demand unstoppable, probably a good idea, all in all. <laughs> yeah, let's have a look at talents. We have... Puncturing Arrow from the... Vala, which makes sense. It is the, da it is the one that's going to eventually game of benefit from Monster Hunter. Mark Zombie taking a lot of damage, Lulu having to pull them out. And the other thing is Varian has gone Lions more. There's probably the two main talents not here from terms of stacking. But interesting enough we see Chromie has gone that vi vision talent of Time Walker's Pursuit which does give her another 10% base spell power bonus and you don't have to stack a quest. Meanwhile, it looks like Greyman was thinking about taking that top camp but they are called back by the side of Nexus Cats. Nexus Cats not quite wanting their dog to run away just yet and call some home. Meanwhile, we can see Vala and Anduin doing a little cheeky cheeky here. And they're going to be stealing the bruiser camp of Regen Nebula. Which Regen Nebula is like, doesn't realize, I believe, you probably think we're just doing top. So go ahead and take bottom camp, which easily taken. You have a grey main. However, this one 
a little bit harder. That Fetch Shaman has a little bit more health. And Lulu is tanking it. But it should be taken soon enough, which is going to be a little bit annoying for the side of Regi Nebula. And they have to... Nexus Cats have to book it. And we can see Regi Nebula aren't too happy their cap was taken, but it does happen sometimes. Nor Valor and Anduin do back out. But... Maybe a little... <laughs> Yeah. So we get nice heads up play from Nexus Cats taking that now. Because without this pushing during the objective, you may have that slide of arms where yours is still pushing. But, yeah. And yep, there we go. We see IT Cowboy is going top now that they're, that level 4 has come through. Murder has torn. And this is where the side of Regen Nebula become much scarier. As a taunt into a silent circle will take out a lot of people, especially with that low blow picked at level 1. That extra hero damage just does so much. Oh, murder has been found. They walked directly into the vision circle and we can see that quickly Arpano oh, and Lulu are trying to finish this off. Mark Zombie is going to slow down to Shives. Well, to Shives is going to be the main person we need to slow down at first. But we should see a lot of racing picking up shortly. And Mark Zombie, this may not be where you want to be, but it does actually look like we're going to get a fight Region Nebula is being pushed into Corfin, getting out as quick as they can. To Shives, nearly made a mistake by staying into a Mortal Sun, but does have to use Q and E to get out of that Worgen form. But right, race has started from. Oh, nope, we're backing out. Getting a lot of safe play from Nexus Cats this game. They've kind of maybe a little bit scarred from the last one, and they're wanting to play much safer. Excellent route by Lulu, probably saving their lives as. The taunt variant was stopped in of their tracks, which unable to find anything. Wow, I realize Chromie's falling sand circles look exactly the same as the stun ones. Hmm, interesting to know. Make a note for next time, Lime. And we can see Mark Zombie's been taunted, and oh, Lulu does give a pull onto them, and they do get to live a little bit longer. They're staying in boldly, but we do see Greymane actually taken down by Anduin to start. Corfin looking for murder. Low Discipline Committee vs. <laughs> board, which I still want to have as a end of season kind of match, which I do think would be hilarious. Are some of the DC taking on against uh, the board as a 5v5 brawl? <laughs> but no. There's a little bit of disparity there, and it'll easily be uh, going over to DC there as board. Honestly, not that hot on skill. I'm going to call them out here. <laughs> But no, we do get race. We can see that it, race is going on to region Nebula for now, but that may very much change when Monster Hunter comes through. And we do see the Immortal is going to go top and is actually not the healthiest, but still around half health. And there's Monster Hunter picked up now. Level 7 advantage is through for Nexus Cats first, so a little bit opposite of what happened last time. Actually, it is Nexus Cats who have a kill advantage for once in the series. Alright, let's go on over here as we... Who's spraying? My guess is Arthur. I don't know. But well, we can see now the objective is going down really quick. Taunted directly in the spin circle. Mark Zombie does get pulled out once again. Lulu with that trust issues button saving their tank. Also, you're welcome, Corfin. Welcome to the stream, by the way. And we can see that this immortal is going down just now. Still about going to be... Two thirds health on a mortal uh, on keep by the time it goes down, and we've got a little bit of tussle going down bottom. Which this isn't a favourable matchup for Blaze. That percent health drain, that or health drain in general onto Blaze does certainly a lot, and you can see they are not going to do well off that one interaction. Meanwhile, we can see the side of Region Nebula is doing top cap. Oh, I need to actually do this, as we are going to get another go of Brawl. Lulu's the only one hit by that W, and is not going to get that Pustle Burst on top of him. But no, we are very much getting Regen Nebula wanting... Oh, cool. Lulu heard me call that out. <laughs> oh, I'm suddenly far less brave when I finally realised people are actually listening to me talk. Huh. Funny that. But we do see that it is going to be this camp getting actually whittled down relatively quickly. Mark Zombie does step up, try help clear the wave. We do see Taunt coming out. We see the Silence coming out. Mark Zombie taking a lot of damage. Lulu tries to give a pull, but however, there's a little bit too much damage for Mark Zombie to handle, and that will be them going down now. And I say it's still the DC. 
I may have talked smack, I may have wanted to backpedal, but no, I'm saying we on DC could absolutely beat the side of the board. Anyway, wait, Lulu, you're the, you're the <laughs> event person. <laughs> no, nah, anyway, let's get back to it. As we do see the side of Raging Nebula, our side of pushing top, and Volt. Not Raging Nebula, Nix gets pushing it off. As we say, Raging Nebula and not wanting their camp stolen again decides to under and actually that is a very dead and when as Lulu goes down we have a see to shives a little bit of awkward situation does need to jump out and now we get heroics through for both teams region nebula starting immediately on the immortal but we do see murders taking a decent amount of damage stuck in slowing sands and actually going down relatively low Corvid doesn't even need to use the entomb there they are just going to well perish and this is suddenly a far less bold region nebula now that Nexus Cats were able to find that kill. And they're going to start racing. Well, let's just zoom all out and have a look at Herox so we get some downtime. As Mark Zombie did go Falling Sword, but we can see the Light Bomb with, from Anduin. So we're going to get a nice Falling Sword Light Bomb combo potentially coming out later. We also see a Tomb, Sowing Sands from Koromi, and Vala went Rain of Vengeance. And on the other hand, we do have fight coming out actually. Let's have a look at that. As we do see a nice double turn backline by Corfin. There's the light bomb falling so getting a nice triple stun. Then we see another triple stun coming out from Mark Zombie. Then another triple stun coming out from Mark Zombie. <laughs> and that is a very, very much a team that suddenly have to backpedal because they lost so much health at the start. However, they didn't actually lose anyone. It was the side of Nexus Cats who lost someone at the start as they lost their off laner of Corfin. However, they are going to be back soon enough. Leoric does have that drain hope ability, well, that drain ability to bring them back earlier thanks to Trait. But that is objective once again going over the side of Region Nebula. A nice double summon by IT Cowboy. Mark Zombie takes a cursed bullet to the face. Lulu having to use pull. Mark Zombie and Lulu backpedaling will actually hold team of Nexus Cats backpedaling. And they're going to have objective going bottom. Well, I imagine the off laners are going to head top and <laughs> Corfin's going to try to save the object, the top keep. Well, IT Cowboy very much wants it. Anyway, let's have a look back bottom, and now Immortal is bottom. We can see Arthano is going to already absolutely chunk that shield, as shield is already down with just two abilities. However, that is a dead Vala. We do see the Falling Sword did come out to try peel for them. That, that unstop usually doing so much to help. However, a little bit too, a little bit too late, as Vala had already taken that damage and ceased existing. But right. Pet Wolverine does get slowed by Murder's Lions more. We do see Torque coming out. with a Silence combo. There's a Cursed Bullet. There is a dead tank. So while it do did look like it may have been a Nexus Cat's favor at first, this is suddenly turning around once again to be looking like it's Regen Nebula's game. We can see Arthno is trying to melt this, well, objective, and it does go down. Murder's stepping up. They know there's no tank on the field currently for Nexus Cat, so why not be at least a little bit threatening to the the squishies of the seat of the seam. So I just say side, I went to say team, and we got seam out of it. But anyway, I and actually had covered all the rocks. We have here Curse Bullet come out, we did have Taunt Marion, Bunker Drop from Blaze, Wave of Force Leaming, and Curse and Flaming Swipes from Stukov. So Vernon Avanches, not end of the world. There's nothing too crazy here at thirteen for the side of I was about to say it from the side of Region Nebula. However, they do have that silence reset, which that can do a lot in a team fight. Just having that silence puddle moving around constantly very much is an issue. Right, we do see that is the Shaman camp pushing top. We do see the side of Region Nebula is going to take that top camp, while everyone from Nexus Cats is chilling bottom. Oh, no. Corfin is just moseying on up. Just going to take their time. But we do see that they are probably going to get run down by a full five members of... Oh, no. Where are we going? They're going to be... They're really not wanting this Bruiser camp to be taken again. It was taken once to be like, mm, no, not a fan. That can hit right off. That is not happening a second time in a single match. Right, let's have a look. I was at 14 Q stacks. It feels like that is a little bit behind where they want to be. Typically with Vala, the critical mass is like honestly 35, 30. 
And we're about halfway to that, especially on this map. Oh, IT Cowboy has been spotted, but no, we have a awkward engage as, well, Murder is still on the other side of Team Rackham, however, is the one getting relatively low. Does use that bio kill switch to just give him that extra burst. Mark Zombie standing in the silence, and actually, again, we're getting so close to a kill for Nexus Cats without it being found. IT Cowboy, however, will use Bunker Drop to Shives having to back out. Getting relatively low. Corfin smells blood in the water, however. IT Cowboy using charge to get out. And no, that will be them getting out once again. Corfin getting charged on. You can see that they're losing most of their health. Ah, no, however, has started racing. Now, this is a common theme so far. That, that the Nexus Cats do get such a good kind of start to the fight. However, one of theirs goes down and we have a lot of low region Nebula players and it isn't quite able to convert into kind of anyone dying. And this is why I'm talking about like critical values at this point, just because like if Bala have that little bit more damage, that may have been a dead Stukov. But it's hard to say. Also, bottom four went down for that, that Shaman camp just pushing straight to it. So this is starting to get a little bit problematic for Nexus Cats. It's going to be a dangerous one. Rackham standing out of position. Arfano does find them. Falling Sword comes out. Light Bomb actually disconnected from it. Went out on Arfano. And actually that is the Sukov found first. Then Anduin's found. However, Greymane next. Murder following soon after. Rackham's actually done a lot for Steam it turns out. As without that healer, everything just kind of crumpled. As that was a quick free kills by the side of Regen Nebula. Uh, by the side of Nexus Cats. They are going to have to get someone to deal with... Nope, actually it did just peter out. Fortunately for Nexus Cats. It didn't even take shield from it, but it did take keep. So they're going to have to get a lot done with this one objective. Varian's still another 20 seconds off, but Immortal is going to land before them. Varian is gonna, not going to quite be there in time. But this is definitely what the side of Nexus Cats needed to start turning things around. Right, here we go. A demon approaches but gets a heaven as you hear here. Yeah, there's Rackham. Varian still on his way. Greymate still on his way. So it's going to be a decent start. And when Tommy just came back, however, now. And Mark Zombie wasn't quite wanting to go in with low health. You can see now there's an awkward little scuffle happening here as IT Cowboy is out of position. Doesn't he drop Bunker? And does use a get out of the... And two very good play by them. Oh, there's Light Bomb. There's Falling Sword. And there is a start of blob. Excellent triple stun actually cancelling blaze charge. We can see Lulu. This is an awkward fight. It's, <laughs> we keep swap. Actually, no, it's down now. So this is where we're going to get things happening. Rackham is the one out of position, however. Stixer goes for a reset onto Arfano. Doesn't quite find it. However, Varian does find the Q onto them, killing them barely with the tip of that Lion's. More of Lion's Fang, whatever it's called. <laughs> we can see IT Cowboy does use charge to get out. Does actually do so. And it is a two for two this time. And we are basically dead even in terms of experience. However, in terms of structures, there's only one keep left for Nexus Cats, which less than ideal. However, Regen Nebula is going to stay in the lead for now. But it is starting to look a little bit scary for them. That was maybe the breath of life that Nexus Cats needed. Also, hi, Ewok. I hope you're doing well. I may not be doing too many DivC matches this Day, but likely more than not, I am. <laughs> Odds are it's going to be a Div C game again, day again. But we can see IT Cowboy has found another light bomb for his all combo as they do. We did have a charge off, doesn't he drop Blunker? Blunker? Blunker immediately. However, that is them trapped in a very tight space, but I do not think they'll quite go down as the side of X gets a little bit. <laughs> okay, I'm definitely not guaranteeing C East, I'm C West. <laughs> I could not guarantee you more C East in well specifically, especially because I'm kind of drying up the Div C matches by the looks of it. Anyway, we do have Nix Immortal coming up in another 20 seconds. It is going to be to see well Bruiser Camp's been picked up. I was going to say Shaman and we'd say Siege, and we can see the side of Region Nebula want to get aggressive, not quite getting there in time, and that is Murder getting a taunt off onto. Corfin, Corfin losing a lot of their health in that one moment, leaming, l launched a full combo into them. Rackham using those flailing swipes. IT Cowboy charges in, doesn't quite find anything. Mark Zombie, however, finds a decent orb to the face. And race is going to be started by the side of Regen Nebula. 
And they're almost halfway, actually. Nix Cats is only starting to step up now. There's a light bomb, there's falling sword, there's a nice triple stun, there's a nice triple stun, there's a nice triple stun. And that is Greyman going down first, racking relatively low. Does get hit by us, double shot by Pet Wolverine, and we see Rackham's going down next. Lulu and Corfin scrapping it out here with the other three. And that is a nice double. Let's see, double and two, and we see Bunker helping people out again. Corfin's having to get dragged out by Lulu. Lulu using that trust issues button relatively effectively, and that's murder actually relatively low. We see Afno rolls. That is the variant going down next. Afno going to race now because they're too low. Mark Zombie wanting to zone out Stixer and IT Cowboy on the other hand. We see they're not wanting them just to get free poke in. IT Cowboy, however, disagrees and wants to get free poke in. We see that Corfin has backed up to defend the Catters and the Shaman. Meanwhile, there is going to be a race going out by Arfano and Lulu. And IT Cowboy very much wanting to get what damage they can off. And you can see they are queuing and w well, w and queuing as, mu as often as possible. Mark Zombie doing their best to kind of slow down that burn, that they're just burn in the literal sense of this case that they're doing. But that is objective going over the side of Nexus Cat for the second time in a row. And once again, it's bottom, and hopefully, we can see them even up the game with getting a keep here, because that would definitely help alleviate the pressure that's constantly pouring in bottom with those catters every single wave spawning. Also, it's 1919, and actually, it's going to be 20s coming fr soon through first for Nexus Cats. So let's open it up quickly, cover the Storm Towers. As you do see, Heaven's Fury picked up by Joanna, Piercing Sands was picked up by Chromie back at level 18. Buried alive by Leoric, Light Bomb upgrade, and a Fire Anduin, and S Storm of Vengeance Vala. Meanwhile, we do have Immortal pushing in now. We do see Gunayan Bundablast picked up, Great Main, top off of Stukov, Repulsion, Leeming, Burn Notice on Blaze, and we do see the Light Bomb falling into a combo. Not quite fighting as Mark this time. We do see Mark Zombie, however, was stuck in that buried life. We'll go down, Murder does charge around Wall. Corfin was going to try to get out, does go a weird direction, do so. IT Cowboy will go down next, however, Vala finding the kill on them, and they'll be the red team, uh, red team taking down the fort of Region Nebula. Stepping up, Murder's taking a lot of damage. Unfortunately, that level 20 of Glory to the Alliance not quite saving them at the moment, but does mean that they're going to hold on long enough to get to safety. Mark Zombie building in some sticks there. We do see Silent Circle directly under Lulu. Lulu can't quite pull herself out of danger. However, we do see Repulsion peeling for Rackham. Rackham was looking in a relatively dangerous spot, but will not go down just yet. We see Mark Zombie is taking a decent amount of mid damage by Stixer. Stixer feeling like they're looking a little bit of that hunger in their eyes. Going after Mark Zombie, however, wasn't quite wanting to full commit to that. As for turning into a full four members of Nexus Cats still may not be the best idea. We do see Falling Sword coming out, landing directly on top of Murder, then gets hit by the Buried Alive. However, Joanna goes down in the process, leaving just finding that big hit at the end. And unfortunately for Joe, she doesn't have the passive Leoric does. She doesn't quite come back as quickly as the spooky ghost man, <laughs> Leoric themselves. But we do now have camps being taken by the side of Nexus Cats. Well, Region Nebula is only just respawned now and are doing their get damage control now. So this is turning up to be a good map too. God damn. Well, Region Nebula did look so dominant map one. This map has been pretty back and forth. It did start out in Nexus Cats' favor for like first three levels. Then Region Nebula is dominating a lot of that early to mid game. And now we're getting into that mid to late game or late game. Nexus Cats are the one to are in control. In control is a loose term. They were one to have a momentum on their side, but by no means it is their match to win. It can still go either way. As we can see that Immortals are coming up soon. Arfano is going to quickly pick up that camp. And actually, now I've realized it's weird that we don't see Acrobat. Acrobat is usually picked up with Q build. And it's a lot of potential damage missed out. But as I said, 30, 34, 30, 35 stacks is where the critical mass starts to come in for Vala and they start doing a lot of damage. We're getting a lot of safe play here. A lot of posturing. Lulu, Mark, Zombie, step up. There's the light bomb. There's the forward sword. Directly on top of that Rackham, and Rackham will go down. That light bomb falling sword has been such a big tool for them. And we can see that they're trying to get in. Murder slowed. That will be murder going down. Kurt's bullet was used and didn't... I've heard it hit its target, but I don't quite know who it killed. 
Interesting. I was just checking if we had subdue because it looked like a very big slow went out onto murder just before they died. But that is the bravest place I've ever seen someone half because I would get like stunned 900 percent <laughs> of the time. One hundred percent of the time I would get stunned trying to half there. But nope, Corfin just gets out scot free. Doesn't need a worry. We do see the spawn one is getting melted after not having to back out. Mark Zombie Zombie does come down now. Curse Bullet actually fighting the Valo directly in the butt. Right. IT Cowboy is now in the awkward position themselves. Mark Zombie nearly got hit by that stun from the Immortal. There's a Light Bomb. There's a Falling Sword. Doesn't find its target this time. Sticks is just a little bit too far away. Nice pull from Lulu. Mark Zombie going. I don't think even where, where Mark Zombie was expecting. And we can see that is Entomb coming out. And that is IT Cowboy getting slowly drained. Pet Wolverine doesn't hit their shots, they actually don't quite hit the target, but Corfin does take it out with one good swipe. Speaking about good swipes, Rackham pushes everyone away. Oh, it is spooky ghost build, okay. They're going after Stixer, does find the W, however Stixer does break the tether. And that is now Corfin out of position, the rest of the team not quite able to keep up with him, and they go down. Good kill for Regen Nebula, they do kind of... Okay, Corfin, chase them. You got your passive, mate. You, you should probably get that roll in, eh? But let's go on up top and see where we're going to go here. As this is still a pretty healthy immortal pushing into the gates of Regen Nebula. See, Corfin is doing the best to come back as soon as possible, but they may be even up Blaze. Oh, may be coming up before Blaze does. Bad center structure, either way. Light Bomb, Falling Sword, Rackham, and Varian hit. Rackham will be going down first. Murder tries to charge Arfno, actually, however, only hits the Immortal instead. As this Immortal is nearly through the keep. There we go. Blaze is up now. Corfin and only just a few seconds later. And now we have a Varian stuck in that. We see that his bunker being dropped. Varian trying to be able to hold on. Does barely get a bunker, actually Corfin going down first. Varian, however, is low when we get out of that. No, there's Chromie going down. This now, while it looks like it was a good fight for Nexus Cats, is now very much region Nebula as one to <laughs> game to win as Mark Zombie does get pulled out. And we have three of the members looking like a core call. No. Oh? They are down the healer. It is a bit dangerous. Yeah, they decide actually no. Let's just play it safe. We're going to get camped. Which, entirely reasonable. Without your healer, a lot of core calls can be a little bit uh, scary. If they had bunker drop up, maybe. But bunker drop, well, call bunker, whatever it's called. I can't actually remember the exact name of it. Yeah, bunker drop. Wow, it is a good siege. It's it's a very good siege tool. It's a very good team fight tool to keep you alive, which we saw Varian was able to get out. There, murder probably was dead to rights otherwise, but no, it's also very good sea tool because suddenly you can hear everyone spamming Q on a single building, and that spamming of Q can do a lot. Chromie is only just coming up now, which actually good timing as objective was just called. And this may be a bit of a uh, strong finish to the map. This next fight is likely, there's likely going to be fight here, and that fight is likely going to be what ends the game, not the immortal. Well, the Immortal will be definitely be yes for safe call, but there's no guarantee that this last Immortal will be the case. You can see that the side of Region Nebula is looking to do a cheeky invite. However, Rackham has been scouted by Mark Zombie, so they know where they are, more or less. Camp has been started by Region. We do see that's a forward sword coming out. That's a nice double stun. You see this bit of split fight. Pit Wolverine saving away from everyone else. However, they find the kill onto... Well, there's a nice double kill coming out, actually, onto the back line of Region Nebula. However, Murder is the next one. Well, Murder is going to be the next target. Barely gets hit by Reign of Vengeance. Barely gets hit by the W. That's someone 127 health, and that's them going down. IT Cowboy looks like it's next on the menu. But no, Corfin doesn't quite read where they're going to go. And that is a kill onto the Blaze. And it looks like, well, yes, they could probably just go to Corfin. They're doing the same thing of just burning Immortal. As they're probably going to get it a little bit faster than 50 seconds. Stixer tries to get cheeky orbs in, doesn't quite find anyone. And keep in mind, Falling Sword is back up. However, Stixer is able to get out scot free.
This model will go down before anyone respawns. The thing is, it will not get to core before everyone respawns. I think Blaze may barely be the only person missing. But it does take a while for that mortal to gain all those shields, fly whatever lane it wants to fly to, probably top. And then push down the lane. And actually you can see Varian's almost up. You can see Varian, uh, Blaze is not too far behind. So yeah, it may have just been better for Nexus Cats to go see, to go straight to core after that fight. But they were just a bit too hesitant. Is this definitely is the safer off, <laughs> safer uh, option? It's a live. It's a 27 minute immortal. It is going to call whether you like it or not. We see light bomb falling sword coming up. Oh, actually, just falling sword. By the looks of it, light bomb is still up. We see now, Arpano and Pip will run a little bit awkward corridor. Lulu is the one taking brunt damage. Does get a nice light bomb off before they go down. It sticks out, however, will find Vala in the meantime and Chromie to f soon after. And this is, uh problematic moment for the side of Nexus Cats. However, I think ne what Nexus Cats should do at this point, because they may be screwed either way, is just see if you can get Immortal to finish it. And we can see Immortal is chunking through it. That is just too much damage from Immortal. Actually, it's Joanna now going down. Corfin doing the best to damage reviews to everyone to make sure the Immortal can get through the last 10%. And that is GG's called as the game goes over to Regen Nebula and Corfin barely holding on to their life for that last little bit. Well played. Mark Zombie, you little... Right, let's have a look at the game summary screen. <laughs> there we go. Right. Let's have talents, apparently, because I'm too lazy to change it over. Fast forward is the first one that stands out to me. We do have Rayforth build Leoric, which one of those three core builds. 41 stacks from Vala, so yep, definitely getting up there. That was just, as I said, 30, 35 was that critical mass, and you can see once that turret came through, that Vala was just doing a bit too much for the side of Regen Nebula to deal with. So, damage, Styxa did have the most, but however, both Chromie and Vala were not too far behind them with 89k and 88k apiece. Soak, Leoric had the advantage there. Blaze was still about 6k off, and even Le you can see that was reflected in the siege damage done as Leoric did have more. But right, that was a good second map. It'll be interesting to see where we go for the third. It'll be interesting to see where we go from the third one. So let me throw it over to map view and see what our last map of the series is. Because I actually have no fucking clue what it's gonna be. Right, load. Okay, Alterac. Interesting. Let me just do something very quickly before I forget. open this and we will be loading into the game now just in the background and we've got two pretty good comps to finish it out i like the ending but i don't know where we're gonna go now this could honestly be either team's game i think nexus cats found the momentum they need as i was saying i think nexus cats found momentum at the end of the last one but let's get into what's gonna happen this one murder is on joanna to shives is on the Material IT Cowboy is on the. I think that was Malfail. Oh no. Styx is on Vala and Rackham is on the Rhaegar. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Corfin back on the Leoric. Arpano is on the Junkrat. Lulu, Stukov, Pet, Wolverine, KT. Or Kalfus, I should say, because KT could also mean Kalfazard. And Mark Zombie is on Garrosh this time. Good luck, have fun being called by both sides, and let's see how this goes down. Ah, it's good to see No You is also here as well. <laughs> yes, push buttons. So imagine we're going to have off lane Terriel. Imagine, definitely going to have off lane Malfail. And then they're probably going to be going into both Leoric and. Junkrat is kind of a two that we probably need. Oh, Pit Wolverine, probably. I'd say that Reaching Nebula probably takes camps a little bit easier than Nexus Cat. Well, Reaching Nebula takes camps a little bit easier than Nexus Cats. We can see now that Deshives and Co is just going to try and melt that wave. But I imagine we're going to see, yep, Terrio stay here. And the thing is, 
<clears throat> I found this out only recently. If you E under the waiver's Terrier with the attack speed, it actually gives your minions, mercs, whatever, attack speed bonus. I'm not a good Terrier. <laughs> I've not played him enough to know that, but I only found that out recently, which is definitely interesting. To Shive's getting aggressive in Pit Wolverine. Pit Wolverine not quite able to find anything. Does find a lot of Living Bomb onto him, however. And now we see T-Shive in an awkward situation. Does have to go the long way around. However, I imagine Sword Toss is coming up soon. There it is. Mark Zombie does go for the Toss of him. Pet Wolverine didn't see the Sword come out. Does go to stun where the Toss went. However, that was it. And then we can see Junk. both camps have been taken mid. And there's going to be a good old scuffle bottom. Now let's have a look at Talent. We see actually Puncturing Arrow picked up by Vala, once again. Terriel has gone back low, quest at level 1, Ardent Restoration, as they kind of bogged off to win top. Meanwhile, Pet Wolverine Mark Zombie is going to have to hold valiantly bottom. And the only second quest on the side of Nexus Cat is actually Mana Addict. Level 4 is through for both teams now. Tishai's in an awkward situation. Does have to keep floating top. Isn't allowed to teleport back where they are, but Corfin may not know that they're going to have a friend up with him in a few moments. Alright, let's have a look. Subdue is the only thing to know here. And actually, we have Junkrat Mind Build, which would be interesting to keep an eye on. Arfano does jump out. Mark Zombie throws Lulu out. Lulu doesn't have a friend pull, however, as I imagine. That may have been a bad pick this game. Let's do Especially if I'm going to start yawning and fucking ruin it that way. <laughs> this is what I get for casting in the morning. I'm always tired. But it's a good way to start my day at least. Because it gets me energetic. It gets me pumped. And it gets a few replays done. Which, if it, if it, <laughs> there's so many at this point. I'm not going to get through them all by the end of the season. There's like 130. Yeah, no, I definitely can't get through this all by the end of the season. But I can at least do a decent amount of these coming, this coming week. As I'm still off work a little bit as my shoulder is still hurts even at the moment. And uh, Painkill is a hell of a thing to keep you kind of going through the day. Especially if just like you're constantly sore, which I am at the moment. Nope, not gonna get addicted or anything like that. It is just part of my recovery for my shoulder. Anyway, we're gonna have a fight coming out soon as Mark Zombie is in danger. Guys get hit by two Qs in a row. Their health just quickly getting whittled down. You can see now that Region Nebula is stepping onto this camp. Well, not this camp, but this objective. We can see actually Vala barely found the objective in time. Lulu trying to turn it over. However, that bullet bouncing on them is probably going to stop them from turning it back over to the side of Nexus Cats. But Nexus Cats do get it now. To Shards gets hit by a stun. We do see Fro coming out there directly in the middle. They do need to see a stun under them. Silent Circle not quite under them. However, Tear Shives will still go down. There's Terriel Bomb getting directed. Nope, Corfin didn't quite Ray Fork out in time, and bomb <laughs> that was directly dropped on top of their head. Right, meanwhile, we have level 7s coming through for both sides. Relatively standard stuff so far, nothing standing out. Junkrat, again, Junkrat Mind Build is probably the most interesting thing here. I do like that Mark Zombie is going that damage reduction on the level 7 for spell damage. Lulu taking that spell damage. Sticks are not quite in 5 a second. Bullet, however, Corfin just getting missed. We can see a fight coming out here. We can see actually there is. Oh, nope, nope, yes. We can see that Kalfus was talking about. In the meantime, Murder now in an awkward situation. Does get stopped by Mark Zombie with that root. We can see Rackham was stuck with silence. Mark Zombie does have to throw Lulu out as Lulu was the one in immediate danger thanks to that aggression from Region Nebula as Corfin is actually also forced to go around the long way. Half and over throwing grenades everywhere. All well, these mines everywhere. We can see Lulu is trying to channel it. Actually, to shy is thrown into a position where they can stop Lulu from actually. Oh, I should say Murder was in a position where they can stop Lulu from getting it. However, Lulu, that is Murder holding on 32%. Well, 32%, 32 health, but no, not quite going to hold on as that is the kill found by Junkrat in the end. You can see now that Nexus Cats are going to be ones aggressing into the side of Region Nebula. In saying that, they could have also just soaked to 10s. And it looks like Circuit of Tens is going to be the play. Remove speed, meaning that Mark Zombie isn't going to quite find Tyrael. Unfortunately for Mark Zombie, we can see camps are being done again. What a surprise. We can see Kalf is going to go soak bottom. We can see camp being going to be taken by Sticks and Rackham. 
So this objective has been up for oh, three minutes now. No one's found it yet. Everyone's more concerned about the soak, more concerned about 10. CP at Wolverine is in a melee battle with Shives. Not quite what you want to be in if you're Kale first. You're not really a melee character per se, but it is a thing at least. We see Lulu is getting the channel, and Murder doesn't actually get the interrupt on it. And the heroics are through first the side of Nexus Cat. So we see Flame Sights picked up by Stukov. Taunt, I should guess, I should call Warlord's Challenge picked up by Garrosh. Riptide, Junkrat, and Tomb Leoric. And Kalfus is having a good old think about it. Because I know, I know that Pyroblast is fun. But you should probably go Phoenix in these games. Nice throw by Mark Zombie, keeping, well, the tank zoned out. And we can actually see it's a lot of damage coming out onto Rackham. Rackham having to self Ancestral, best Ancestral. Mark Zombie actually relatively low. IT Cowboy drops last rights directly on top of Mark Zombie. And that's a very dead zombie. Arfano dodges the Reign of Vengeance. Arfano barely holding on, 50 health. Actually, Terio uses Judgment to go on in, then uses Sword to get out, and that's two kills from the side of Regen Nebula. Not quite what you're going to see if your Nexus Cats are However, We are going to keep going, as this is now the objective phase for Nexus Cats, as they do have those cavalry out. And actually, it was Pyroblast picked up in the end by Kael'thas. Also, speaking of ultimate or heroics, we do see it. We did already see that Regen Nebula picked up Ancestral Healing, Judgment and Last Rites by the Rhaegar, Tyrael and Malfail respectively, but we will see Blessed Shield picked up by Joanna and Reign of Vengeance was picked up by the Vala. Meanwhile, Pet Wolverine steps back out. They're not quite wanting to get rotated on by the side of Regent Nebula. So Nexus Cats is just going to kind of have a little bit of a uh, disappointing objective phase just because of those early those kills just before the cavalry reach them. But they did at least still get a little bit of pressure bottom, mid, and top, but definitely the most happened bottom. Camp being picked up by Regen Nebula now, once again, they're now going to get a little bit of advantage in terms of camps there. And you can see that experience basically even after that fight. All right, let me close this. This Mark Zombie is just starting to march on up to, sh to Shives to get the little bit of soak they could. And we can see now Junkrat and Stukov is doing this camp for Nexus Cats. We're well, getting a little bit of tussle up top. IT Cowboy and Corfin trading out what they can. And this is a pretty even matchup, actually. If Corfin hits their hand, they do better. But if IT Cowboy just gets mark on them without Corfin hitting a creepy hand, it does all right. We can see this bottom, object this bottom boss is going down. And the side of Nexus Cats haven't actually sniffed it out. See, Rackham nearly actually goes down to boss stun. And this boss is going to be found before they can step on. Lulu is actually stepping up. And we can see Lulu just walked up, slapped Stukov one, step, slapped Rhaegar once, and Rhaegar went down. Stixer has to pop the spell armor. Stukov gets the flaming swipes. However, that's a nice taunt, meaning Lulu's going to live a bit longer. Lulu finds a second kill for this fight. Murder now is the one in danger as they get taken out by the Junkrat Pit Wolverine doing the best to survive. To Shives is pushed into the fort by the Junkrat mine. Lulu and Pit Wolverine holding on for dear life. Mark Zombie does get the throw in, and that is the Terriel going down at the end. Oh, that's, a l that's why j that mine build is so fun on Junkrat. I'm not good enough to use it just because I have a ping that means that, well, if I throw out a mine, I can't use it immediately. I have to wait like half a second before it actually wants to activate. But we did have a boss steal by the side of Regen Nebula. Just be and uh, that fight did start with Lulu just honestly walking up and just backhanding Rackham with that Stukov strong arm style. Oh yeah, I should probably do that between matches. Uh, for those who don't know, I have a twin. And... Coincidentally, it's their birthday and my own birthday today, so probably should make sure I call them because that would be a bit of a bad look if I forget my own twin's birthday. Anyway, we do have a fight coming out. There's a decent amount coming out, decent amount of damage coming out onto Murder to start. IT Cowboy, however, went relatively down, but does back out as well. Mark Zombie in that danger zone. I imagine we're going to see last rights. Not if there's a massive silence onto everyone. And we can see Mark Zombie holding on for dear life, and that is an excellent bomb, and that is what could have been disastrous for the side of Region Nebula uh, for. 
from Nexus Cats is an excellent turnaround of Region Nebula loses two for the price of one and that is what you want to see if you are Nexus Cats. New on Murder's getting poked down quite a bit. Corfin sitting back up to him does get a nice little swipe on him. Uh, however, unstopped means they will not be slowed and that will be the game going over to the, well not the game, wow. That will be the objective going over to the side of Nexus Cats. Tishai's taking a decent amount of damage, does get poked out a little bit. And it looks like Nexus Cats is just going to want to march it up bottom, which, understandable, it is... It is a relatively open fort, and we can actually see that we're now having Arfano chase down. Hit by Judgment mid-flight, and that is Arfano going down. Terio teleports out, and it looks like that bottom plan may be a bit scrapped here, as we're just going to go to any other lane. <laughs> any other lane. To be fair. Hmm, that's being weird. Sorry, I'm just trying to check something. It's just being a little bit slow. Hope that my mic's still picking up properly. Oh, sorry. Right, let's get back to the action. As you see the side of... Nexus Cats were pushing down top. They are going to have to step back out now. They got what they wanted, and they don't need to stay in any longer. Right, there we go. Excellent. Excellent, actually, defense by Region Nebula for finding that kill early on. And But they did, however, lose two structures in the process, which I guess will happen no matter what kind of happens there. But we can see, meanwhile, top. Mark Zombie is watching that boss, making sure no one does it. And then we have bad camera work by me, because my mouse apparently was all the way up here. Uh, we do have Nexus Cats picking up that siege game. Meanwhile... Region Nebula will pick up their own siege camp. Looks like that the side of Region Nebula were wanting to sniff out boss. See that no one's doing it. But will they do it themselves is the question. And the bigger, another one is, will the side of Nexus Cats be expecting it? Let's see, there is a decent push going on mid. Oh, four out of the five members are there. You can see Mark Zombie is going to scout top. Can see no one's doing boss. And actually that will be now the back line going, oh, that's where they are. As we can see, Stun coming out onto Shives, uh, from to Shives onto Lulu. Lulu does get thrown out. Murder now is the one in danger as they are below half health. We see that is once again a good, ooh, there's an anti-synergy there. See that once again, there's a good ancestral. However, the Entomb was cancelled out a little bit by the Junkrat Mine. Because that Mine build does have a little bit of synergy with it. And that then pushed out of that, make it build a bear. Silence too. The old Corfin and Mark Zombie relatively low. We can see that is at level 16 coming through both sides. And actually, there's Junkrat finding the kill onto Murder. Important turnaround there, nonetheless. What's happening here? Right. Ping's coming out. We do see Mark Zombie actually relatively low. Meanwhile, this siege camp is pushing in. I guess they see. Oh, they see yeah, they are siege camps this match. Pushing, pushing in. We can see that is Tower 1 going down. Well, the camp has only just dropped now, but it's actually a rather large wave pushing in. Junkrat is going to start the camp for the side of Nexus Cats. Meanwhile, I imagine we're going to see either Rackham or Vala. Just, no, they're not going to do their siege camp. It's a choice. It may not be the correct choice, but it is a choice. Just give me a moment. Right. Objective is up. Level 20s is pretty close for the side of Nexus Cat. So imagine we're going to get a little bit of patience before that one happens. But let's see how we go. That was about to be... Oh, moustache. Sorry, sometimes my facial hair gets a little bit too long. We're hitting that point where my my moustache is just a little bit too long and, and my beard's a little bit too long. It just gets a little bit itchy sometimes. And honestly, it's one of the big, biggest distractions I have available to me outside of a cell phone. Anyway... We do have the side of Region Nebula wanting a fight before Nexus Cats can get that level 20. We see Ancestral coming out. Riptide finds IT Cowboy. IT Cowboy actually taking a lot of damage so far. They're getting relatively low. Excellent talk for Garrosh. We do see the Silence and Varuk coming out. Pyro used on the Styxer. Styxer not quite going to go down there. They do have that spell over. How Rackham, on the other hand, will go down. And that is Judgment going out onto Pet Wolverine. Pet Wolverine actually relatively low now. Murder and Tish is doing the best. Meanwhile, we see Malfail going down on the back line. Sticks are having to back out. Nice double throw by Mark Zombie. His 20s were picked up there during that fight. We can see Titanic Might was picked up. Murder trying to get the kill onto Pet Wolverine on their way out. But no, they will go down. 
And that is a... Oh, wow. I mean, Corfin actually chased down Barlow. So that is a quad kill for the side of Nexus Cats. And enemies captured ally camp. It will be their camp being pushed in. Corfin is quickly dealing with this camp. Yeah, but then we see boss call has been done by Arthur now. At least one of the team members of Nexus Cats. As it goes on and slams and welcome to the champs. Right. Lulu is the tank here, apparently. Mark Zombie only just coming in now to help alleviate that stress from Lulu as they do have armor making one of the best tanks for well, taking a boss outside of like, I don't know, an ETC who can self-sustain for it quite well. But that is boss found. Objective won't be too far away either. Ten seconds left on it. And the respawn's only just ro rolling through now for Regen Nebula. And the thing is, while like, I would go like, yeah, end! This is one of those maps where you, this is the map actually, where you do need two well, essentially need two keeps to end, because otherwise that court takes a long time to burn through. Oh, sticks are barely clipped by that flame strike. And actually, let's have a look at some of the storm talents. I'm just going to have it up at the bottom of the screen for a moment, just because we do see a fight is breaking out. But no, Tishives is going in. We can see them diving on Arthur, no, taking a decent amount of damage in the process. Taunt used, didn't quite find them. But I was going to say, flame strikes from Stukov. We do have flame for our canvas. We have that buried alive being used here by Corfin. However, Rackham does walk forwards out of it. We do see that they're in danger. Throw coming out of two cowboy. And Ancestral has already used this fight. Corfin actually relatively low, does have to back out. Also, we know we have extra oomph from Riptire, so that Riptire cooldown reduction. As I only found one hero there, however, didn't get too much. And that is all those heroic storm talents from Nexus Cats. Right, but Tishives is going back in. They are double teleport? Yeah, they are double teleport. And we can now see that Mark Zombie is wanting to get a good throw here. They barely hit sticks up with the stun, that's about it. But we can see now the cavalry are pushing in. But right, let's see how we're going to go. As Mark Zombie steps up, we do see a totem being dropped. going to stop from dead of their track, because that is honestly a 16% move speed reduction. Uh, an 80% move speed reduction by that time, and it does so much. The old Mark Zombie is going to be a little bit of a spot of bother. However, that is an and two missing. We see Arthano actually is cancelled out via Riptide, and that will be... Pet Wolverine, they have spell armor, my dude! <laughs> As it is once again Pyro going on to Sticks, and Sticks are popping their active to give him 45 spell armor, effectively halving the damage of the Pyro Blast, which doesn't quite outright kill them, but definitely does a would do a decent amount of damage even without that spell armor. Oh. Right. Boss call is being done by the side of Regen Nebula. As we can see now that Corfin is going in getting a massive damage reduction. <laughs> Actually going relatively low now. However, we do see that it is the buried alive in back. Imagine we're gonna see a big one here. IT Cowboy is going to be first going down. Massive bomb spread by Region, ne by Region Nebula. And they, however, that Splash Ancestral went off. That Farsi is blessing. However, the damage a little bit too much. Junkrat is taking out in process. But we do see a triple, a three for one going over to the side of Region Nebula. And it's going to be almost impossible when they came out to catch up to, to Shives. And Stixa does also make it out. And we're going up to a boss pushing into core. We do have a decent wave top. We have the camp pushing mid. We have the side of Nick Skat stealing its awesome mid camp and boss coming bottom. This may just be an end call by the side of Nexus Cats. That is one fort going down. And now we have this core dropping pretty quickly to just a small wave alone. And we have a boss and an even larger wave coming mid with two camps. And that looks like it will likely be the game. And oh. Pyro Boss will find Val this time. Nope, it's going to get stopped mid-flight. Is that is the game? And the series going over the side of Nexus Cats. GG, called by both sides. As that was actually a good series. Right, let me drop it on over to the game summary screen. Let's see how that went. In terms, in terms of Soak, we do see that Leoric once again had the most. 137 to 123 IT Cowboy. Or I should say Siege, but Soak did go over to him as well. 24k to 18k. As they were kind of picking up that double Soak kind of standard. The most bar. 
Uh, in terms of healing, Lulu did an excellent amount of healing there. 101.9k to the nice amount of healing Ray guarded of 69.666. <laughs> That's one of my favorite healing numbers I've seen this game. It's not 420, but it's still a good one. Uh, other than that, hero damage. Vala did have the most, but they did have rather beefy front line to protect them. But honestly, Junkrat was not too far behind them either. And KL Fist not too far behind them. So, let's have a look at stat uh, talents. See if anything stands out. Ah, uh, no. We do have that kind of stuff the same bruise Terial build. Junkrat Mind build is probably the most interesting thing here that stands out. Yeah. All in all, it's kind of more straightforward stuff here. Full Q build, Joanna, probably is like the last thing to kind of point out. Because usually, a typical you see a lot of it move speed W at level 7, because just because it helps Joanna get on top of people. But hey, since exposed, that minus 35% healing can do a lot into Stuka. But right, let's go over to the map view screen and see kind of how this all played out. As I, remember to as I remember to change the score, there's the score change. Right, as we can see, it was a 2-1 win to Nexus Cats. They did get a reverse sweep. Map 1, definitely regen Nebula's map. They absolutely kind of roll Nexus Cats, which is not ideal for them, but hey, it is at least, it was a very strong showing. And we can see Nexus Cats did take a while to come off the ground for that second map. However, they did eventually come off the ground and took the win on the second map, coming into quite a late game for... Quite a late battlefield of turning, uh, 27 minutes, or what that game was. And then we got here with the last one. We did have Ultrac Pass, as you saw, it did just go over to Nexus Cats. But right, that's going to be it for me, for this series at least. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself onto mute. I'm going to put on some, honestly, in-game music, just through Spotify. And I'm going to find us another series. I can't guarantee it's going to be Division C. I think I have a Division B match in morning cast because I haven't touched them too much. For C yeah, I've took out a lot of Div C. I feel like it's only fair I do branch out into other divisions. So what I'm going to do is I'll be right back, but I'll see you, well, maybe some of you, but at least some others soon enough. See you when I'm back.